Hey guys, Level Cap here and welcome to This Week in Gaming. The next Battlefield game and Nvidia's new line of GPUs have been revealed. If you're here for something like FPS or DLC news, just click its category to skip to that section of the video. Mobile users can see the description for timestamps. First up, Battlefield 1 has been revealed. EA premiered the trailer for the upcoming World War 1 shooter at a live stream event that I attended last Friday. I had some hands-on experience with a very early build of the game, and while I can't say much about my experience, everything I can say is in the video which I made about it, and you can see that here. Now obviously this is very exciting stuff for Battlefield fans and while the trailer might be more Michael Bay than gameplay, there's no denying that it's pretty epic. In fact, most people seem to agree as it's now the top rated trailer on YouTube. Interestingly, Call of Duty Infinite Warfare's reveal trailer is nearly in the top three of most disliked trailers ever on YouTube. This has become a growing trend with the Call of Duty reveal trailers, and I think a lot of it has to do with not only the theme they chose, which is modern futuristic warfare for what, like the third time in a row now, a lot of people have been hankering for some old school warfare, but in addition to that, Call of Duty always seems to be more of a theme shift than really an evolution of the game or an upgrade to the game, where Battlefield, on the other hand, always seems to make a pretty good effort at revitalizing the gameplay in some cool new way, adding in new team play elements, dynamic events that occur in maps that can change the strategy and progression. There's a lot more for Battlefield to actually tweak and modify, and Call of Duty, on the other hand, just kind of sticks to the same formula, which on one hand, some people might like because you always know what you're going to get from a Call of Duty game. On the other hand, there's clearly a lot of people out there that feel the franchise has become quite stagnant, and it's shown in the downvotes on the trailer. That being said, trailer reception has shown to have very little correlation with the success of an actual game, where Black Ops 2's reveal trailer did not do well at all, yet it was one of the most successful Call of Duty titles in the franchise. So I certainly don't think Call of Duty fans have anything to worry about when it comes to the actual population of their game. As for how Battlefield 1's launch will go, EA is confident that launching both it and Titanfall 2 in the fall will not hurt sales. Responding to concerns about the release timing for both games, EA's Andrew Wilson responded by saying, there's a very broad and diverse set of players who play games in that FPS category. Hopefully both launches go smoother than they did for last year's games, as both BF4 and Titanfall launched with tons of server issues that prevented many people from even installing the game. In hardware news, Nvidia has opened the floodgates on 4K and VR gaming with their newly announced GTX 1070 and 1080. GPUs. Expected to launch in June, the new GPUs are comparable to their current line of high-end GPUs like the Titan X and 980 Ti. The exciting part, however, is the price. The 1080 will run you about $600, but the 1070 will only cost $380. Considering the performance both cards offer and that they're the higher-end GPUs in a whole new line of GPUs, I think it's safe to say that affordable 4K gaming is getting a lot more realistic. The GPUs also bring Bring various improvements to rendering games in VR and new technology for using face cam in games to take screenshots. The PS4's hardware upgrade has been confirmed for an October release. The release window and new hardware specs are based on rumors that so far haven't been confirmed by Sony, but they have been confirmed by multiple credible news outlets and we can expect a solid confirmation of the PlayStation Neo at Sony's press event around E3. Overwatch's final beta wrapped up this week and it shattered records for a beta, topping off at a whopping 9.7 million participants. The beta was played by more people than the the Division has registered players. The Division, by the way, is now the biggest IP ever with 9.5 million registered players. So it's safe to say that Overwatch is going to sell really well. Personally, I think Blizzard has created not only an incredibly fun and addictive game to play, but it's also very, very skill-based and it works well as a spectator sport. I would be very surprised if this was not a shoe-in for another big esports title. I certainly plan on making some regular Overwatch content once the game launches, and if you want to see some of the cool beta content I've made, check these videos out. Now back to The Division. Its next update will feature a new incursion and tweaks to some perks. 
Massive have acknowledged that the weapons are in sore need of changes and have promised that a dedicated weapons update will re be released at some point soon after the upcoming 1.2 patch. They still haven't said much regarding their work to stop hackers from doing whatever they want in the game world. This is sort of, again, a universal Ubisoft problem at the moment with a lot of their PC titles, and I hope they can lock it down. The newest update for Rainbow Six Siege, Operation Dustline, has dropped this week, featuring new weapons, operators, a map, and a host of tweaks and fixes. This big update brings a lot of changes to the game. If you'd like to know more about it, I did do a video covering this update, which you can check out here. The game is certainly getting fleshed out a bit more, and it actually has very good player retention as well, so hopefully this means Ubisoft will be committed to Rainbow Six Siege for the long run. In other update news, Gears of War Ultimate Edition now has been patched to support new features from the most recent Windows 10 update. The game now has options for disabling VSync and running at an uncapped frame rate. Other universal Windows platform games like Quantum Break will also need patches to support the new features, and I'm making air quotes here when I say features. To be honest, these aren't features, these are necessities that every PC gamer should expect to have control over. They are core functions not high-end graphic options. Being able to run a game in proper full screen at an unlocked frame rate isn't something people should have to wait for patches to include. If Microsoft are serious about their PC gaming platform, they're gonna need to give people a reason to use it other than buggy console ports. In esports news, ESL has announced the founding of the World Esports Association, with the goal of creating an open and inclusive organization to oversee the standardized tournament regulations, player representation, as well as revenue sharing for teams, ESL have not gone into extensive detail about how World Esports Association will manage that goal. Based on their announcement, it sounds like they're trying to do what other sports leagues like FIFA and the NFL have done by creating player unions, managing broadcasting rights, and standardizing tournaments and seasons. In a lot of ways, this is great for esports. Part of what makes following esports difficult is that there are so many different leagues and events to follow. And while I think the current system gives esports a lot more flexibility and character, there's something to be said for having predictable season schedules that doesn't change every few months depending on what league you follow. Many esports personalities have voiced their concerns about the World Esports Association and see it less as a unifying force working for the benefit of esports and more as an umbrella corporation trying to get its hands in more pockets. I think it's inevitable that some company would try something like this and hopefully it will work out well for everyone involved. Despite what some people might say about esports, it's really interesting and fun to watch, so having a more organized way of following it would certainly be nice for some people. In related esports news, Activision Blizzard announced that they're overhauling MLG TV in several ways. One of which is broadcasting on Facebook Live. The improvements that they're making to MLG TV, like live scoreboards and play-by-play -play updates, sound great, but live streaming on Facebook so far seems to be limited to Periscope-like mobile streaming. It'll certainly be interesting to see what Facebook does and to see if they actually have any sort of chance of competing with Twitch when it comes to eSports live streaming. Personally, I'm highly skeptical of Facebook's ability to innovate on any industry at this point in time. I did recently receive an email from the live streaming team trying to get me to come over and do live streaming for Facebook. When I asked them about their revenue sharing plan, they said they're working on it. So it seems weird that they're trying to get people to engage in their platform instead of engaging on Twitch when Twitch actually has a revenue model and Facebook does not yet. In fact, they're pretty bad about their video revenue model at the moment, which actually cuts in and hurts YouTubers' money significantly. And uh, this is kind of a big deal. They don't regulate copyrights well. They don't stop people from reposting other people's content on Facebook from YouTube. It's actually a really big issue in the YouTuber world. So I'm not inclined personally to try and support anything they're doing until they fix the exploits that are hurting other industries. In our last bit of news, Doom has been released and the positive reviews are pouring in. Since review copies weren't sent out to news outlets prior to Doom's launch, most of the reviews are just first impressions and not reviews of the full game. But speaking personally, I'm having a ton of fun with the single player. I plan on actually releasing a review on Monday, so stay tuned. Hopefully I'll have the game completely beat by then and I can give you a complete overview. As always guys, thanks for watching this week in gaming. I hope you enjoyed it and I'll See you next time. This is Level Cap signing off.